Wordle, the word puzzle game taking over the world right now, is actually hackable so that you can get the answer in a single guess every single time. Don't believe me? Let's go ahead and dive in and see how that's possible. Wordle is a word-based game that allows you to take six guesses per day to guess a single word. All the words are always five digits, and there can be repeat numbers and things of that nature. At the very end, you get your score, how many guesses it took to get it, and you can share that. And I'm sure you've seen this all over social media at this point, all those green, yellow, and gray bubbles. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at what it takes to actually get the correct answer, um, how we can get that, and how you too can do it in a single guess every single time. So if we dive into the actual website itself, we're going to be greeted with the game. Uh, it's very straightforward. You have five uh, letters for every single word. There are six guesses that you can take. And so if I wanted to say, I don't know, create as my first word today, that's not create. <laughs> uh, how about just crate, right? <clears throat> well, there you go. So it tells me that the C was correct in its position, R-A-T-E were not correct. Pretty straightforward. If I continue to go down this path, let's say, oh, and then the other thing that's interesting is that it will knock those letters out. So I know that I can't necessarily choose an R because it doesn't exist. Um, so it tells me that, you know, if I were to guess these again, I wouldn't actually get anywhere. To open up the code here, we see that it's a pretty basic HTML page. We've got CSS that styles the page, but if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we're going to find a JavaScript file. So let's go ahead and open it up. And here we notice that it's your basic JavaScript. This is what actually makes the app run, what allows the colors to show up when you click on it, tells you what's correct, what's not, what shows the correct letters in the, the spots that they're supposed to be. But if you continue to scroll down, we'll actually find that there is a list of words here. Now there's actually two lists here. It's kind of hard to find. The second one starts here and the first one starts here. So let's go ahead and just grab both of these lists and I've done this already. Uh, and maybe you've already seen the, the phrases here, um, on uh, the, the titles of these files. So there are two different lists. One of the lists, is uh, actually just all of the possible words that are five letters that you could guess. Um, I'm not certain that this is 100% accurate to every single English word that you could guess um, with five letters, or if it's just most of them, but it is quite extensive. It's about 12,000 records. Uh, this one here is the, actually the answer list. Um, so we have all of the possible answers that it will go through, and there's about 2,000 of these. So if we wanted to determine what the answer is going to be every single time, because it does rotate every single day, let's go ahead and build something that will hack this. Now I've already done this, and so I'm not going to show exactly how I built this, um, but I'll walk through it and, and show you how it works. And based on this, we can determine the pattern that Wordle uses. So basically, there's a couple of things that we need to pull out from this game. When you play it, there are dead letters, right? Those gray letters. Um, when we find a dead letter, like in our example from earlier, we can go ahead and enter it in here. So we've got an R, an A, a T, and an E. An R, an A, a T, and an E. This will tell our algorithm that, hey, these letters, if they appear in any of the possible words, we wanna to just toss that word out completely because R, A, T, E today is not going to appear in the word at all. If we continue down here, we're gonna have correct letters in the wrong positions. We don't have any of those yet, so we'll come back to that. And then at the next step, we have our verified letters. If we go back to our example today, C was a verified letter. It said, hey, C is in the correct position of index zero. So now with that in place, let's go ahead and just read through the code briefly before we run it, and it'll tell us actually what we're supposed to do. So Wordle has two sets of lists. Um, one is a short unordered list of answers and one is a long ordered list of all possible words. You may see how you can get the final answer at this point. All words in the list are unique and are exactly five letters long, and some of the words have repeating letters, such as null, which is in that list. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to grab the answers uh, from those lists. We're going to get the total number and we're gonna do some printing. A lot of this is just for debugging purposes. But then the magic comes in if we wanted to determine the best possible guess, 
to be all of our friends, we want to make sure that we're guessing the thing, the, the word that is most probable to show up. And that's actually very doable if we have the data, which we found that we do, right? We grab the data from the lists that were unfortunately on the client side of their website. Lesson learned. If you have to have your answers somewhere, make sure that it's server side so that people like myself can't just come and grab them and steal the answers. Uh, what we want to do is we want to get the most common starting letters and letters overall for the given list. And so what we're going to do is we're simply going to um, go over every single possible word and we're going to check the letters in the alphabet and we're going to add a counter for that. Now, I will say that this code is very sloppy. It was thrown together quickly and just for fun, there's certainly a lot better ways to do this. But basically, we're going to continue through the alphabet, counting every single occurrence of a letter so that we can tell how many letters appeared inside of uh, all of the occurrences uh, throughout the whole list. At the very end, we're going to print out what the most common starting letter was, which in this case is S, and that's, that's typical of um, most of the English language, if you pick up a dictionary, oftentimes S has the most words in it. And then we're going to print the most common letters. Um, I don't remember what it is in this set. I don't think it's S. Um, it's probably a vowel. But what it will do is it'll print all 26 of the letters of the alphabet and it will tell you in descending order their most common um, occurrences. And I'll show you that here in a second. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually get the best words to guess out of that. And so similarly, we now have the most occurrences of every single letter and we have the best starting letter for the set of words that we have. We're going to give them a weighted ranking based on the probability that they're actually going to appear. Meaning that a word that starts with an S is going to rank higher than a word that starts with a Z. It's not many words start with a Z and because there's less words that start with a Z, it's less likely that the word of the day is going to start with a Z. Similarly, we're going to pick words that have the highest weighted possible letters in them. So we want to pick words that have S's, A's, E's, T's, and things of that nature because typically those and a few others appear most frequently. What this allows for us to do is on the game itself, is you'll notice that I already picked a letter or a word, excuse me, that started with a lot of these. A, T, E are pretty, pretty typical for uh, words to have letter, uh, these letters in them. And so what this means is that I know that the word of the day does not have A or E, and so I can toss out a ton of words already because the, some of the, the biggest vowels are already knocked off of our list. Similarly with T, with R, a lot of words might use those. So we can knock off high probability items really quickly. So if we come back here, we're going to do a last couple minute things, such as um, pulling in our criteria that we entered earlier, right? We're only going to return words that have a correct letter verified. Um, and, and that's a little bit further down. So at this point, we're only going to return words that start with a C. We're gonna to toss everything out because we know today's word starts with a C. We're also going to ignore or only choose words that have letters that were in a correct, that were correct but in a wrong position. So let's say that um, T was not in the correct position, but it's in our word today, which it's not, but let's pretend. This would actually show up yellow, um, and we may get to that when we run this the second time. And what that's going to do is it's going to say, okay, toss out all of the words that have a T in the zero, one, two, third index position, because we know it's in the word today, but it's not in this position. And so very quickly, we start to filter out all the possible words. Finally, um, we're going to check if the word has a matched criteria and if it's not failed, meaning if the word failed, it was filtered out because of any of the things that I mentioned previously. And finally, we're going to print the possible words. Uh, we're going to give a count of how many words are possible. There might be a hundred words that meet this criteria, but what we're going to do is we are going to only return the best words, uh, maybe the, the top five best words so that the user has less options to pick from, but that they're the highest priority um, items to choose from. Um, and then this is just a helper function to help with the above item. And then this is a helper function to read the files which have the list. Okay, so when we actually run this, this is what it looks like. We have total number of words, which is about 13,000. We have the most common starting letter, 
which is um, S in this case, with 67 words in the list starting with S. There's 35 that start with C and so on. The most common letters in the whole list of words left is O with 4,400, L with 42, and so on and so forth. Uh, based on our criteria that we entered, right, these dead letters and verified letters, aka words that start with a C, there's actually only 34 possible words left. So we went from 13,000 total words that we need to guess to 34, which is awesome. And we can actually look at this and we can see that colon is the best possible guess with a weighted uh, probability of 96 points. Now, I don't like to guess things that have duplicate letters in them, such as these double O's, because in the first guess or two, we want to try and filter out uh, possible letters. And if we use a repeat letter, although it colon may be the word of the day, uh, we want to try and use as many chances to filter out letters so that we can get the best guess sooner. So looking down this list, it looks like everything has a repeat. Uh, and so I don't have a lot of a lot of great answers here. One thing we could do is we could tweak the number of best guesses it will return me to 10. And we could choose the very next thing such as could. Now it's not um, the best possible guess uh, based on the data we have colon is. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is the best guess. I'm gonna use could because it doesn't have any repeat letters and I can start to filter them out better sooner. And it's the next best guess without repeats. And actually, that was the word of the day. Uh, I haven't played this today, so I don't know, uh, or rather, I didn't know that that was it. Um, so let's let's play it again, um, and I'll show you what this would have looked like had we have guessed colon. Now, if we wanted to open this up in a private tab, we can actually play again multiple times a day. Uh, don't tell your friends. So let's go ahead and pretend as if we had no data in here. And let's guess the most probable answers every single time. So the very best possible guess that we could do is steer. Now I'm going to use stare because it has less repeats. And so I'm going to put in stare. And hit enter. And we can see that I didn't get anything today uh, on that first guess. And that's okay. So I'm going to put in S, T, A, R, and E. And we're going to run it again. So now we're back where we were before, where colon is the best possible guess. So I'm going to go ahead and punch in colon. Now we know this isn't true, but what I want to show you is how this works. Uh, so C, as we knew, is the starting letter. Now we see that O is also verified in the second position, and L is in our word, but it's in the wrong position. So let's go ahead and enter that in. We've got C, we've got O, we've got L, but it's in the wrong position. So following the syntax of the example above, 0, 1, 2, it's in the second index. We're going to go ahead and enter that in here. And then we know that N is a dead letter. And we know that O is already in our word, so we're not going to put it in the dead letters. You can see I have a to-do note here. If a word appears, if a letter appears in the verified letters array, we should avoid its occurrence in the dead letters. Uh, so I want to do this in code, so if somebody accidentally adds this in, such as um, adding an O here, which we know is in our word, that it will go ahead and just ignore it. And that's another project for another day. So we'll check that out later. So let's go ahead and just run this. Now we see that um, there's two possible words left with all that criteria. There's uh, Cowie and there's could. Now, I don't know too many people who are going to say the word Cowie. And so naturally I would choose could. And of course we know that that is the word of the day, but let's just go ahead and choose for kicks and giggles, um, Cali. And we know that that's not the word of the day, so we've got dead letter Y's in here. We have a verified L in the third index. We can save this, and now we can move, remove the L from the correct letters wrong position because we got it in the right position, and we can see that the best guess, aka the only one left with this criteria is the word could. There you go. So with this in mind, we have the word of the day, which is could. Uh, we're able to guess it very quickly if we use this algorithm properly, right? Typically within the third or the fourth guess. Now, what if we wanted to guess on the first time every time? Uh, unfortunately, this app has a fatal flaw, which is 
Number one, you can get all of this data for free. It's open. Uh, you can just snag the answer list. Number two, the list is not ordered. You've got focal, evade, naval, serve, etc. Now, what happens here is that the list goes through itself um, sequentially. So on day one, it was cigar. On day two, on day three, on day four, and it continued down the list. What should have happened is this list should be ordered and the server should pick a random word from this list because then it wouldn't be so easily guessable. Now we know the answer of the day is could. There you go. Which means that tomorrow the answer of the day is going to be wrong because it does go through this list sequentially. So what this means is that you want to find out a single answer play the game as normal, and then if you want to wow all of your friends and show them that you've beaten it in one, simply open the list, go find the next day's word, and you'll have uh, your guess in one. So that's pretty much it. Wordle, the uh, word puzzle game taking over the word, world, uh, guessable in one every single time. Now, if you wanted to play it normal, that's the best way to play it, obviously, because it's much more fun that way. If you wanted to use my tool to be able to solve the word uh, programmatically, I will have the link in the description. Would love for you to go check it out, have some fun with it. Um, I've been using it for about a week, week and a half now, and it's a lot of fun to beat all my friends. Uh, and then obviously if you wanted to just show off, you could guess it in one because you now know the answer to getting the answer every single time. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe to me. I'll see you next time.